as it's great connecting with you on this platform. Can you tell us a little bit brief about yourself? So I'm Dr. Joel Roos. I'm the Vice President of International Accreditation, Quality Improvement and Patient Safety for the Joint Commission International. And so I've come here to give a couple of presentations on uh, accreditation in uh, hospitals and work with some more, visit some of our clients as well. That's really great knowing you. So coming to this uh, recent emerging medical field, like uh, what do you think like our medical professionals should do a continuous learning in the healthcare professions to upgrade themselves? Is it necessary for all healthcare professionals? By definition, ongoing and continuous learning is required for healthcare professionals. It doesn't matter whether you're, I'm a physician obviously, but physician, nurse, technician, like there are requirements that you stay current with practices with the literature and the like. That's why there's such thing as continuing medical education uh, credits and requirements. Uh, I don't know what they are in India, but in the United States to maintain my medical license, I'm required to have a certain amount of uh, training every year and they audit it. And so you can do it in different areas, but medicine changes daily. Um, and so what you learned 10 years ago, five years ago, one year ago may not be current given new drugs, new devices, new procedures. And so it's mandatory. It doesn't matter where you are in medicine, you will be dangerous if you do not stay current. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. As you are an international patient safety council like, uh, and your speaker for today, what makes you feel motivated to be a speaker on such platforms? Well, as a physician, I want to make healthcare safer and better. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. The organization I work for is committed to improving quality and patient safety. Part of my job is to share what I know, or uh, but also learn from everyone else that has things to share as well. And so um, medicine advances through collaboration. There's uh, no one perfect mm. person or source of knowledge like the, the sharing and interaction of all the different people here is what actually advances medicine and and it works in other fields too but we're, we're focused on medicine today so thank you for sharing that as you are into the patient safety like recent time most of the time cyber security is common and major concern now yes like what uh, measures your team is trying to take in protecting the sensitive patient sensitive information so so from a you know from an accreditation standpoint what we do is set guidelines that organizations should follow and so we have, uh, we'll have new standards coming out in June and th there are some basic data security standards in place. Um, however, I would, you know, accreditation organizations for healthcare, we're not the experts on cybersecurity. There are other firms, there are other certifications um, and, and they're cyber professionals. It, it's an absolute must to protect the data for, for all the reasons uh, you know, and, and there's cases of hospitals being hijacked for their data uh, around the world. So it's important and, it, and it, our approach is you need to secure it and you need to have processes in place. We don't necessarily dictate those processes and uh, that's sort of how accreditation works in general. Thank you for sharing that and what do you feel from your perspective like technology in healthcare, how technology will impact in healthcare? Uh, that's what I was talking about in one of my uh, earlier. It, it You can't do healthcare without technology and all the Advances in technology will advance healthcare. One of the, you know, uh, I talked earlier uh, yesterday on moving patient care from the hospital to the home. And technology will allow you to take, provide hospital level service in a patient's home. You have wearable monitors, you have cameras, you can deliver medications by drone. Um, so you can move healthcare to a patient where a patient is more comfortable in their home and deliver more patient centric care. You have uh, AI with national language processing and the like, being able to come up with new algorithms and analyze data differently. Um, as computing power uh, increases, you see the diagnostic devices changing. Choose any part of the hospital or any part of medicine and technology is impacting it. I can, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you for that. And as you mentioned about AI, like from your perspective, do you think like AI is usable because most of the doctors are still like on two sides of a coin? Kind so, of? So there's a couple of pieces when you start talking AI. AI will definitely have a use in medicine. It's already being adopted in many areas and it has its place. You know, doctors are afraid that suddenly it's going to replace them. There's some fear of that. Um, so it's, it's ability to handle disparate data and do different things with it is, is here and now. 
The real issue in my mind and, and other experts um, is that we're rolling out this technology without the safeguards. It, you know, if, you, uh, do, if you're a drug company, you develop a new medication. There's multiple levels of evidence and, and uh, clinical trials and things that you need to demonstrate and prove that the drug is safe and what the side effects are. Same thing if you're inventing a new device that will touch a patient. Um, there's, you know, in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration handles that certification. But there's processes in place. We're not doing it that with AI. We're just basically rolling it out. Um, and governments are trying to catch up on to how to certify and ensure that the, the technology of AI is um, safe. And, and that's, I think, some of the reluctance for, from physicians to take it up is we're not going to, I'm convinced that it will be effective. What I don't know at the moment is, is it safe. Thank you for sharing all that information with us.